Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of our complete Theros set review. We are going over all of the red cards today. I am Evan Irwin. Oh, that's my, oh, sorry, I'm Brad Nelson. Hi. Oh, oh, was I supposed to talk now? I wasn't sure if I was supposed to talk now. That's totally weird. But seriously, you guys have been joining us all week talking about every single card in this incredible set. I totally love it. I think it's absolutely brilliant. We're going to start with the red cards today and our Crowan Crusader. This card is really sweet, one of the best heroic abilities. The, just the ability to just like jump and get you. Really sweet with the ordeals. This is the guy I want to throw an ordeal on turn two and just get him, make another guy and you know, swing for whatever, put a plus one plus one counter I on mean, him. I did not jump Card's on sweet. I did not jump on the young Pyromancer bandwagon when it was all going on. It wasn't that good, and I'm not gonna jump on this one. I don't think making a one one is that powerful. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What po what bandwagon? You know the bandwagon that I jumped on? I said it was gonna be in construct or I said it was gonna be in legacy. And it just so happened to win a legacy open like three weeks ago. Ta-da! Look, sometimes a broken clock right twice a day, yada yada. But still, <laughs> I get it. But ultimately, uh, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not jumping on any train on here. Don't get me wrong. I'm, all, I'm talking about limited interactions here. No, I do not I, see no, this guy in constructed. I don't agree he's going to hit constructed. I think that's stretching it, to be honest. I mean, even for limited, I'm not on. I don't think it's that great. I think it's fine. I don't think it's great. I think it's in draft. Let's, yeah. Let's, 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 you know, you know, when you start talking about limited, there's a sealed world and there's a draft world and they don't always mesh. See, I would have liked a heroic card like this to put a 1-1 into play that is a copy of him. So then the copy gets heroic. So like when he dies, your other guy gets heroic. Seriously, I think that's fine. I don't think that's busted. Yeah, I just wish it was like pushed to the max and just like gave devotion. That's not and like, that push. Yes, it would be. And you'll see it in some of the other guys. You're like the guy that deals damage equal to the devotion to red? How insane would that guy be with this guy if he made copies of himself? Okay, maybe a little. Exactly. <laughs> when you make copies of yourself, that's totally different because you're copying the mana cost yep. as well as the name and everything else and blah, blah. Sure. Again, I think that this, is, this still is a, is a fine card. It's really good with every type of enchantment you have on it, no matter what type they are. It's great with the spells that hit two creatures at one time to make extra creatures. Like, it's I a sweet one. I would say you play your one ones for one because I'm not going to be doing it, buddy. It's better in draft. I don't really like it that much in sealed. Next card, it's really cool. Fine, whatever, my God. Anger of the God. Woo! Out of the pissed. Yeah, they are, and this card is going to just destroy all the creatures. Uh, uh, tomorrow, or actually yesterday, uh, you know, Jerry and I had a video go up, and it was disgusting what he did to me with this card. Oh. It was bad. He just, oh. just dismantled me with Anger of the Gods. I didn't know how good this was going to be until I just got like, Realize that there's no aggressive start that can deal any damage if they play this on turn three. It's just so good. Um, it basically answers any aggressive start that you might have in the current and format. And then you're like, swipe removal like Dread Boars and things like that pick off everything else. So right. I think this card is going to let you be a control strategy without having to play blue-white. Uh, of course, your control strategy is probably going to just die to blue-white Sphinx's Revelations. But... It's a very good card, and I think it's going to see a lot of constructed play. Yep. Um, and yeah, I, I actually think that this card alone is going to take Pod off of its throne in modern. Like Pod is that deck that like quietly just wins every tournament, but like think about what this does to a Pod deck. It just destroys everything. But it's that sorcery they don't speed. No, that's, that's your problem. That's fine, but it, it kills all their voices. It kills all of their kitchen fixes, all of everything. Like right. everything's just gone. I understand. It's uh, but it sort of drives that deck, at least in modern. Uh, to, to do more things either at the end of their turn or make sure that they combo out uh, playing around Anger of the Gods. Because it's sorcery, that means that they can, you know, end of your turn play a Pestamite, my turn I'll play a Kikijiki and get you, you know, that type of thing. It, it makes them play differently. I mean, they have but to it hit their one But it doesn't, it doesn't just make their decks suck. You know, like I think if this was an instant, they would have a hell of a lot harder hey, time. Hey, Evan, Evan. Yeah, that deck is like really good and modern. We should just say it beats it. Because it really actually does beat it. You're saying... Right. You're saying that the pod deck that has a one of Pestermite and a one of Kikijiki is going to end of turn play Pestermite into play Kikijiki. Okay, you got me. No, I think they're probably going to play more Pestermites and more Kikijikis and turn it more into a Kikijiki Pestermite deck than they are a pod deck. It depends. I don't know, okay? Then it doesn't it did matter. Job. Then it did its job. Fine. It, that's fair. That said, I enjoy the volcanic fallouts. I love the slag storms. I like the three mana red sweeper effects yep. that are built to answer the format. And that's exactly what all those cards did in their respective formats. Yep. They, they did specific things to keep certain really fast aggro decks in check, and that's exactly what this card does. 
It's going to be absolutely amazing and limited where you're going, you're going to be able to set it up to where you, like, you lose nobody and they get three or four for one and you're able to win easily thereafter. What is, is, it, is, that, is that a pie bad hand? Is that a pie bad hand? I think what? this is for Anger of the Gods being in modern. No, 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 no. I am no. I I am more confident in legacy than I am my modern. Uh, I can't do it. No right. thanks. Arena athlete is good. A two man or two one. He's not great. He's not your fire for striker. No no no. <laughs> um, and so he's he's worse than the battalion guy, but it's fine. It's one of those abilities you want to exist on a two man or two one in red. It's a little bit difficult to uh, to trigger in that it's. Like to trigger it and then to get a lot of value out of it. Like you kind of you want to trigger him again and again, like you yep. would a battalion with a firefish striker. But this guy requires you to keep playing spells on him, which is the, a little weird. The sweet thing that I like about this card is he is a human and he does cost two mana. So the the cool things is is he could potentially work with Zathur Necromancer. Mm -hmm. He gets Burning Tree Emissaried. And if you want to play cards like what's the card called again? Um, that does what? It uh, plus three plus zero and can't be blocked up by two creatures. Madcap skills. Oh, you can madcap mad, skills them. And then madcap skills is actually completely insane right now. Yeah, yeah like, actually too. ridiculous. Yeah, I think madcap skills is going to be a, see a lot of playing constructed. Um, it cracks me up that this guy is just a human, like literally, just a just human. a human, not yeah. a human warrior, not a human why cleric. Is that? They, they usually do do human warrior. Well, why? Right. Is they it only human? show type and class and not just the type. And it's weird that he's an athlete and you wouldn't call him a warrior. I don't get it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's weird. Uh, ultimately, I mean, it is going to be pretty good and limited in that you're able to sort mm -hmm. of work his ability into your strategy. I think he is uncommon for a reason in that you don't want too mm -hmm. many of these guys around because they give you a ton of ways to cast spells on your own guys and make sure yeah. that the, the best thing your opponent has can't block. Um, it will be a good role player. I just don't see it in Constructive while Firefish Striker exists. They can work together to make everything not block. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they can't. Borderland Minotaur, who wants a 4 mana 4-3? I mean, this is like one of the best Minotaurs, like just for power and toughness related. Yeah, like, it's just good. It's just very stats. powerful. Yeah. Right. Good stats. Good man. Good and limited. You're not going to be super excited to play it, but you are going to make sure it happens. It, you know, it's in all of your red decks, and you're never going to be that unhappy with it in terms of its power yeah. and toughness ratio. And it's some scary ass art. It's pretty scary. Yeah. Um, he's kind of putting the sword in that guy's chest. And he still looks very mad at him. It's like, this guy's is on his like last breath. And right. He's like, I'm so pissed, I'm just going to put the dirt away. All I'm glad is that I live in this world and not that. And like I don't want to be around Minotaurs. They do not look friendly. No, they seem pretty quick to anger and yeah. a little scary. <laughs> and he's got that green elbow thing going on. I don't know what that is. <laughs> he, might, he might need a cream for that. There might need to be... You know, there, there's a salve <laughs> he can put. Minotaur salve. All right, moving on. Boulder fall. Uh, there is a reason this is eight mana. D Todd actually said something that made me die laughing. Go on. This is Bogarden. Because there's no Hellkite involved. <laughs> oh my god. It's only Bogarden. Oh, that's cute. That's adorable. Yeah, I mean, it's the same cause. Creatures and, and or players, yes. It's, it's just minus the Hellkite. It's super cool. Um, but ultimately, I think it also sort of points toward how slow the format is. Yeah. You know, this, is, this is common removal. You know, this is normally removal, at least in terms of its effect, that you were like, oh my god, first, first big windmill slam because it's so good. And then you're like, hey, mana. <laughs> yeah, I, I think this is just too slow for like monstrous. Like people are gonna have mana open to monstrous, or they already did it. Mm -hmm. Like I think this is just late to the party. It's like at this point you're gonna limp to eight mana just to deal five to them, just try to win the game. You know, like, with a shrine to Nykthos big red deck, is it really insane to think that they can get to eight mana? I mean, I think you can get there if you have. I'm uh, just throwing it out there. You, you know have what I mean? Nykthos, like if you have the land. Right, you're playing Nykthos yeah. and with. You know, Reckoner and Ember Swallower. Oh, we're talking state. Yeah, no way. Look! Ever. Look! What are you look. I'm saying? It's not I'm even just Luna. saying. Look, if I'd have said Ethereal Armor is constructed playable while we were looking at Return of Adam's Guards, you would have called me the most craziest person you'd ever met. No, no, I would have. You said an eight mana Dill 5 spell. Fine. I mean, but again, I know we don't have a fire. Nykthos is not about, it, it, Nykthos is more about ignoring the mana cost than it is paying attention Wait, can to I just cost. say one thing real quick? Oh, here we go. One thing. One thing. One quick thing. One. There's a card that costs the same amount of mana that is better than this, except it costs red and white. 
And you oh said it was going to be insane. God. And now you're saying Boulder Club? No, Club? I'm not saying it's going to be insane. Don't, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's not be putting words. All I said was, is it playable? Well, I agree Aurelius Fury, <laughs> which I may have gotten a pie in the face for, is very good and actually is a lot better these days. Oh, of course. Yeah, I actually think it's not that bad of a card now. Right. Now it's actually pretty <laughs> yeah. sweet because it's not, you know, fighting against the Innistrad stuff. But that doesn't really matter. I was just throwing out the possibility that, yes, it's a bunch of mana, but with Nick Thos and the Mono Red stuff, big red stuff, I don't think it's insane. Whoop. <laughs> how good is it? In, how good is that in limited? Let's back up a slogan. That's terrible. I think it's way too slow. All right. So it's just like literally even in sealed? I, I mean, I will not be happy playing this card in sealed. Wow. If I play this, there is something went wrong. In sealed? It's, okay, so at the point as that slow you get as mana, this format looks to be, at the point you get to eight mana, you might not even be able to kill one creature, let alone get value out of it. Says who? It says me. I mean, because you can divide it as much as you want. A it could just be a lot of lot of acts to their face, but m mainly it's the ability to screw up their combat big time. You know, you smash your guys into their guys, and then you play Boulder Fall and like kill that two to this, three to this, you know, whatever. I don't think so. You I'm can, just saying, you can prove me in, wrong, a, in a world where we're monstrosity for eight, and we're saying that's totally okay and totally playable and good and sealed, and so monstrous on and so forth. Monstrous and cards that cost, monstrous for eight and cards that cost eight are two completely separate I things. I agree with you. However, the, the point is getting to eight mana. Yeah, I agree that getting to eight mana we can get to eight mana in limited. Not necessarily in draft. Depends on the I'm speed. I'm saying that the effect for eight sealed. mana is pretty blah. The effect for eight mana is a little underwhelming. However, it is a common. I think those who play popper. Will appreciate the fact that this is common. However, the million what mana cost. What are you doing? But the million mana cost is the problem. I get it. I get it. God. They just banned a storm card because they play storm in popper. Well, yeah, that cloud post was dumb, and I'm glad it's gone. Yeah. Whatever. Coordinated as coordinated assault. Um, Kindle Fury is like so pissed right now. It's just like really, really. Kindle Fury, by the way, is one red instant plus one plus zero in first strike. Yep. Uh, this is doubly so. It's just up a rarity and does twice as much and is totally sick. Yeah, it's very powerful. Um, I mean, we've seen like what you could do in the last format. What was the card called that had Overload that did the same thing? Uh, yeah, it was the target creature you control gets plus one plus zero oh, overload for strike. Red and the Colors. Yeah. Uh, um, and First Strike, yeah. So you could overload that one for Red and the Colors and give all of them, but that doesn't matter. In Theros, you want to be targeting. Exactly. And you want to be playing spells that are targeting. So this does exactly what you're looking for. And do. the heroic cards that are like red and white are very aggressive. We'll get to a lot of them that are really awesome. Yep. So I really like this card a lot. Yeah, this card is super powerful. You should be picking it early in your red decks. It's going to blow out everything. One mana spell to have two heroic triggers. Yeah, Can't beat very it. Very good. Very nice. Death Bellow Raider. Two mana for a 2-3. I mean, I... It's fine. No, I think it's like better than fine. I think that I think this... Good. I mean, I think this card could see constructive play. Whoa. It is a 2-3 two, for 2 mana. Right. That is a high power and toughness. That has to attack every turn. Yeah, but they, I don't think attacking every turn is that big of a deal when that's what you want your, your job to do is to attack every turn. Like, I'm just saying that I don't know if this is better or worse than, like, Chainwalker. Like, you need these aggressive cards for, like, these hyper-aggressive It's worse. Decks. Chain Walker doesn't have to attack every turn, and Chain Walker's a 3-2. Yeah, but it can get blocked by stuff. And so can this. But not not small stuff. <laughs> Maybe? I always go by voice resurgence. If, if it interacts well with voice resurgence, I think it's cool. You and your voice resurgence tests. All I'm saying is, yeah. it's, it's a fine card for me in Limited that could be better because of all the enchantments that you have. Yep. You're able to pump it, you're able to play spells on it, which is good. But having to attack every turn has always been a huge downside. It's always been, it's always put you in a position. Well, you asked Tattermunch Maniac because that card didn't see any play. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Demolish, reprinted for the sixth time. Do we really time? have to say anything about Demolish? Like, yes, come on. we gotta say something. Can we, can we just like, director, can we just like flashback to all the times we talked about Demolish and just do that? Where it's like, Poof, talk about Demolish. Poof, talk about Demolish. Poof, yeah. talk about, all right. Look, I want to keep it brief. Demolish is worse than Stone Rain because Stone Rain is too powerful. So as one more mana, it destroys lands or artifacts in a, an enchantment block. It's really awkward, to yeah. be honest. Um, and that's all. It's not very good. It's probably the best art of a Demolish. It's really good art. Yeah, but other than that, maybe those are the boulders that fall. Dragon Mantle, 
I was trying to look at other cards that do this type of thing. There was, um, there was a card in Time Spiral that was uh, a red Nicholas. It was Githu something. Uh, Githu... Uh, Fire? Uh, no. Githu. It was like Githu Embrace or something. It was Githu something. Anyway, it was red Nicholas for fire breathing, yep. but it had flash. It was a fire breathing enchantment yep. uh, aura, but it had flash. So that was the only thing that can kind of compare to this. Basically, Except what I was trying to... breathing. Right. Well, I mean, fire breathing is one red, but it's at sorcerer speed. It doesn't draw you a card. Yeah, And sure. there you go. So I was trying to figure out like... All right, so they let this one draw a card. It's obviously better than fire breathing. Um, what is it? You know, what is it worse than? And basically, it's not really worse than much. Uh, it's the best version of a fire breathing effect. Absolutely, they yeah. really pushed this one. It's super good. It's surprising that if you just add draw a card, it just becomes the best version of every other model. That's how it works in Magic. And maybe one day we'll be so spoiled it will have to draw two cards for us to be impressed. If we get to a point where this is a Magic card, but it says draw two cards. Magic will be dead. Look, man, if we were reviewing <laughs> sets, you know, back in Stronghold and stuff, you know, if we get to a point where a creature does blah, blah, blah when it enters the battlefield, you know. I feel like this is a good idea, and we should start a Kickstarter, and if we get to a certain number, we have to review every set, like once every two weeks. <laughs> How high would that number have to be if you have to go back to, like, Portal? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> How many sets? What type of evil deviant are you? Hey, there's a number, man. There is a number. There's always a number. I know. Always a number. <laughs> God, what is your sanity worth? <laughs> I don't know. I know that. Wait, what, what, how big does the number have to be if we just go over unhinged and unglued? Come on, like that would be a sweet set. That would be a sweet one. Yeah. I, I'd enjoy that one. <laughs> Not gonna lie. All right, Dragon Mantle. Still, the best fire breathing ever. It does draw you a card. It is really sweet. It turns on heroic. It's very good and limited. I don't, I don't think you play a ton of them, but it's easily one of those cards you put in your deck in order to ensure heroic triggers. I definitely, I even, I, I actually think that this could see constructive play, like standard play. Are you trolling me? No, it just cantrip. So cantrip is fine for one mana investment. You get a cantrip. You get a replacement effect. You don't have to like invest more mana into supreme verdicts. Um, you can like. Make your creatures like Ash Zila have first strike and fire breathing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just hyper aggressive. Yourself? I well, mean, you don't always, you don't two for one yourself in mono red decks because like you just play it really fast. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll err on the side of no constructive play on this one, but it's fine. I mean, what I'm saying is if like some of the heroic is pretty good, you'll want this along with Madcap skills, and that might be a thing. I'm just, saying, just saying, just saying, pie bet. Pie bet. Like, what's a pie bet? Does this have to see like? Like, be in a high-level event? Yeah. Top 16, open series, before a Born of the Gods. Just one copy. I'm not going to do four. No. I'm thinking main deck versus sideboard. There's no way it's going to be in a sideboard. It's going to be in a main deck. If, if they want it, it's going to be in a main deck. Really? Yeah. One copy. <sighs> before Born of the Gods. <sighs> I'm sorry, was that a hand? Was that a hand ready to shake? Uh, one copy? I'll give you one copy. Someone's going to troll me and just have one copy. Please, everyone, put one copy no, in the monitor. No, you're not. Please, no, he's not. He's going to draw it. five. It's going to be so good. I'm going to like that one. <laughs> Ember Swallower. Now, this is interesting. Th to me, normally what they do is they put cards that are not going to be constructed playable in intro packs. And this is the intro pack red rare. So I sort of immediately go like, eh, it's not going to be that good. And then I come back to it and I'm like, Four mana, four, five. We already talked about Reaper of the Wilds. Why that's good. Mm -hmm. Nykthos really gives you the ability to make that monstrosity happen early in ways that it wouldn't be able to otherwise. Yes. And if you can't fire off that monstrosity earlier, or early rather, it's not as good, just period. Like, you want to hit it early so you can stunt them soon, mm -hmm. and then have your four, five turn into a seven, eight, and then get them. Yep. Essentially. Um, that, that's pretty much all I got on Ember Swallower in that it's really good and limited because it's pushed. Yep. So it's pushed in both its abilities and its power and toughness for its cost. Um, but in Constructed, it's really interesting to me in that there are certain cards that make it amazing, but if you don't draw them, it's a pretty mediocre guy. I mean, it's not really. I mean, he's still 4-5 for 5, or 4-5 for 4, and you can, like, use your removal to get him through. You can trade with things. Like, he's a bigger than Smiter, and that's something to say, you know? He's bigger than Smiter, but he's more than Smiter. He more costs more than Smiter. Costs one more. That's fine. It's a, it's a trade-up. Like, the Smiter's going to have to tr try to get around the Ember Swallower. And I like that it alone, like, it gives you a way 
to mess with Sphinx's revelation. Hmm. Like that's just a sweet thing. If we're, like you, if you're playing a big red, well, deck, I you mean, have to we're going to read, we're going to find the monstrosity effect that actually messes with Sphinx's revelation here shortly. I, I, but this is the one that messes with it. That doesn't. Really? Yep. Really? Because you're going to deal with it before you rev. You're not just going to be like, oh man, he's got that in seven lands. I'm just going to draw a bunch of cards. Well, you can't until you. We'll talk about him. Yeah. Later. Okay. Regardless, Ember Swallower is super sweet and limited. I think it is certainly near first pickable range. It depends if there's a Lightning Strike. I mean, Lightning Strike versus Ember Swallower, what do you take? <laughs> what that card? Okay. It's a 4-5 four, for 4. Fine. I'm just asking. <laughs> Can't just ask a question around here. Can't just ask it. Nope. Like, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Is there a Boulder Fall in the pack? <laughs> Moving on. God. Fanatic Amogus. Now, this is a guy I could see hitting Constructed. Very easily, I think this card is going to see, be see like two or three up. Like this is your new Hell Rider, but your deck is a little bit different. It's like very aggressive, lots of one, two, and threes. Right. Like you're curving out at Boris Reckoner, maybe Chandra's Phoenix, and then you've got yeah, this definitely guy. Chandra's Phoenix. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you want Chandra's because well, you have the, the Fire Drinker Seder, and then you have Ashtella, and then you have Reckoner, and then you have Fanatic Amogus. Yeah. Like enjoy taking six. Just exactly. for playing this guy. Just exactly. For playing him. I think this Actually, card is. Oh my God, seven. Because <laughs> he counts himself. Yeah. That's that, that is a lot of damage. And yeah. of course, that's against the goldfish, so whatever. And you've already dealt, uh, you've actually dealt lethal. Is that lethal at that point? The yeah, it's the extremely, fire yeah, it, it, If it's goldfish, it's lethal because it's, it's four, 4 plus 8 plus 11. So it's actually, yeah, it's, it's very lethal. Wow. Yeah. So again, this guy is really powerful. If you want, if you like playing mono red, he's the, he's the man for you. Mm -hmm. uh, he's one of those conversely good and constructed, bad and limited. Not 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 terrible and limited, just not as good. I mean, uh, his two toughness keeps him down. The fact that you can't, you know, just have infinite it's red reach. devotion. If, you, if you're trying to fight red, like if you're trying to be a little aggressive, it does have reach in the sense that he comes down and does damage on his own. Right. And then they have to deal with the four two. So. I think this will see lim like I don't think you're just like not going to play it in limited like if you're playing red I think you're going to play it. I would say yeah I mean like, the right way to say it is that conversely like it's amazing in standard where it, where it fits mm -hmm. in the deck and it's good in limited. It's did, not did I actually make a pie bet about that fire breathing card? <laughs> that is ridiculous. <laughs> Jeez. Woo! I want Joey cashing in that one. <laughs> wow. All right. Fanatic Amogus. Do you pick it highly? Uh no. Because I don't like red cards. Well, I mean, but ultimately, no, I know, I know, I know. well, there's that. But ultimately, it's just. Mm. I think you like you you do because if you hit multiples and like he does have a really good ability. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think he's like pretty high. Like I think you in pack one you'll see him go like fourth, fifth, but I don't think you'll see that in pack two or three. Hmm. Fair enough. All right, Fire Drinker Seder. One of those cards, like the pre-order price started out really low. I think it's still pretty low currently. It's only like two or three dollars, and I'm just like, guys. Yes, it's Jackal Pup, but it doesn't matter. It's Jackal Pup with an upside, and it's going to be four of an every well, red see, deck. What you, don't, so. what you don't understand is people in, in real life are reasonable human beings, and they like actually playing Magic. They don't hate everything around them. But now if you go on Magic Online, this card's probably like $50, because everyone <laughs> and their mother plays Mono Red on Moto, well, yeah. and it's making me mad. Oh, Everyone. Ooh, I play it like 80% of the time. Mm -hmm. I actually got so tilted that I just built a, like, Tristani, Fiendslayer, Paladin, like, every life gain spell in the book. I, I, I'm not kidding. I had Trading Post and, and uh, Angel and and no, no even Angelic Accord. Like, I just played all life gain. Wow. Really? And, and then I played against <laughs> Demir Control the next round. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. As you should have. But I was, like, tilted. I was just, like, moderate every round. Karma said, what's up? And Fire Jack Crusader is really sweet. It's one of those cards that, had it came out a few years ago, people would be wigging out. At the power level of this thing. They'd be like, er, my gird, I can't believe they made a better Jackal Pup that has a pump ability. This is crazy, blah, blah, well, blah. Yeah, but years ago, like, magic is different now. Like, the thing that, that's different about magic is it's all on board. You're trying to get on board as fast as possible mm -hmm. because the cards, the creatures are, are all giving you upsides and, and things like that. Like, for example, like Voice of Resurgence. Like, mm -hmm. that, that is a prime example of it has the more copies of it you play, the more actual cards you get. So, like, if everyone's trying to get on board immediately, this guy has a lot more hurdles to jump through, and he's just going to... Sometimes this card is going to deal you damage and not your opponent. The best way I, I heard it described was that 
Um, the it reason wasn't me fumbling over that sentence. It like, wasn't you and that no? was him who was kind of a train wreck. Yeah. Um, the, the best way I've ever described is that Jaggle Pup was really good in his day because everyone wasn't playing creatures. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, everyone is playing creatures, so it makes it worse. So even a Jaggle Pup with his own pump ability built in, he is not that powerful. I mean, I agree because uh, you look at this card and you take away its text and you replace it with comes into play tapped and a heroic ability and we go, Ooh, yeah, and then we get to this and we're like, it's rare and red, it's so good. Mm. I mean, it might be good in the like 16 one drop mono red deck and like 22 drop with I mean, it's like, going to be the four of in the red deck. Like the red deck wants a one mana two one. It really does. Even if black got one, even if white got one, doesn't matter. But it already The had red one, one needed one. It already, ha it already has one, too. Yeah, I mean, but more. Yeah. You know, the, the more the better. And it lost Strong Kirk Noble. And so mm -hmm. when it loses Strong Kirk Noble and it gains Fire Drinker Seder, I mean, you know, you're not really losing out a whole ton. I mean, yeah. I think Noble's better uh, just because he couldn't be bought by humans and he got bigger over time and yada, yada. But again, you need that early punch, and that's what this guy gives you. And I don't know why people just, just, uh, and it, Strong Kirk was the exact same way. You know, people, it, it was valued very low when it first came out. No one was really high on it. No one really talked about it. And then the red decks came out, four of Stromkirk, every single one of them, obviously, because mm -hmm. it's the, it's the go-to red rare spell and once in the one drop, and I think this is going to be the exact same way. Huh? It's just, just a thing. Uh, fire, flame Speaker Adept is neat. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty weird to see, like, whenever you scry as, as, a, <laughs> as a trigger. Like, when you scry, do something. Like, what? I hardly ever scry, except in this set when I scry all the time. Yeah, so, like, so ob obviously not constructed playable. So, scry me a river. Yeah, so yeah. Rocky scry. Mountain scry. Yeah. <laughs> Get rich or die scrying. <laughs> oh! 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 <laughs> that was good. You liked like that one, I didn't like that you? One, yeah. I liked that one. I liked that one a lot. Woo! All right! <laughs> So, again, it's one of those, like, at the end of the day, it's a three mana, two, three. It's worth it. Three mana, two, three that randomly gets some sweet bonuses, even better. You know, if you can, um, if you can instantly scry with a spell or an effect or whatever, then, then it's, it's way, way better. Yeah, but for the most part, it's meh. Most of the time, it's just a three mana, two, three. I think three. it's an uncommon, mostly because if you, you could actually build the, like, common scry mm. deck and they didn't want that to happen. I that, think and I think it's such a weird ability. Maybe yeah. that's why they kept it in uncommon. But... Not a card you pick highly. It's something that's probably going to go late. You're probably mm -hmm. going to wheel it or, or then some. Not a card you're super excited about, but can fill the curve and, and will randomly get some cool bonuses. Yep. <laughs> that's right. Richard Dice Grind. That's right. You're Richard Dice Grind. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. The Hammer of Purphoros. Unreal sweet. I actually think this thing is unbelievably good and limited. It comes with its own army that you can build over time. I think it will see constructed play in some form or fashion, even as maybe a one of or a two of, just yep. because it gives you reach. Mm -hmm. And go ahead. Yeah, no, I mean, I definitely think that this card is going to be a limited all-star just because, yeah, you get haste, which is a good upside when you're ahead. Um, when you're flooding out, especially in your, like, 10 mountain, 7 something else decks, like, you're able to, like, start turning your mountains into 3-3s. Three and whenever you can turn lands into something like not just literally but just like mana sink them or get any value out of them it's great right uh just because that means that every single mountain you drop off the top of your deck can potentially be a three three golem as well mm -hmm. so um, ultimately i i i love this card a lot i think it's really sweet i think it's yeah. what you want to do in red i think it gives you the devotion for perforos i mean like you know it, it yep. does it does the things and i love the fact you sack lands to make three three guys it's awesome yep I, it's great Absolutely sweet. Um, you know, you pick it early, pretty much, you know, unlimited, and you enjoy it and sealed and all that good stuff. I think it's pretty easy to say that most rares you just take. That's just kind of how magic works. Mostly. Yeah, they're all re really, really, really good. It depends. Like, if sure. you, I mean, like, compared to that, like, think about if your opponent I mean, is not taking a rare, how much worse any card they have is besides Hammer or Porphyros. Like, it's really, it's just In like those packs, cool yeah. sure. Um, Ill tempered Cyclops. This to me is the. The first real bread and butter, and I try not to use that phrase, but the bread and butter monstrosity card. This is one of those like that you show as an example as like the the seminal monstrosity design. It's a hill giant that has trample that gets super huge when you pay twice as much for it. Well, not twice as much. Yeah, for yeah, it. yeah. It's fifty percent more. Whatever. Yeah, but like. The one thing I don't get about it is it's like already a Cyclops. I mean, I understand like it's a, like 
it's like a creature that I don't get why what's happening when it becomes monstrous. You know, like there's no ability. There's just you just you get just, some counters. I mean, I think on this one they try to name it that way. You know what I mean? Like ill-tempered Cyclops. It's yeah. a Cyclops, and then it gets all pissed. You know, like yeah. six man, a pissed three. Like, you know, when this creature isn't isn't pissed or you know whatever. Like I would have much they rather put just three plus one plus one counters on it, and it's pissed. I don't know why it just didn't have trample, and then when it became monstrous, it gets trample. I would have liked that much more. I feel yeah. that would have been an actual more flavorful way to put yeah. it than just say it's always trample, and then when I do this, it just gets bigger. Yeah, and, and, it and it's pretty easy. Like, uh, sure, I guess they they you know would have missed out on this one line of flavor text. That's what they wouldn't have wow. had. Wow, you guys, you guys fought yeah. for <laughs> angry and asleep, huh? <laughs> It's good though in limited. It's it's a good card. You enjoy it on turn four. You're able to monstrosity uh, monstrous uh, monstrosity it later. Um, you know you're not going to be unhappy with it. You're not going to take it super high, but you are going to. It is going to make almost every red deck you play. Yep. Just because it's good. Good man, labyrinth champion. However, this is a rare. Ooh. Yeah, this Ooh. one is scary. Uh, I don't want to play against this card in limited. Now I don't think this will see constructed play. I don't like either. like it, the black counterpart, which you know makes everyone sacrifice creatures. Right. Uh, but it does do some great things in limited, and just being able to shock people through any like trigger is pretty cool. Um, it's really powerful. I mean, ultimately, a lot of people were really excited about this card, and I was just like, I don't see it. I really don't. Yeah. See it. I was just like, it's good, but four mana tutus. It's fine. Are four mana tutus. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that excited. And constructed. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. limited's one thing, right? It can be a four mana one two. It's, the only time fine. I want to play with this is with Agoraphobia. I kind of want to do that with the, the black one, too, though. <laughs> like, get it? I get it? I get it? I get it? Yeah. I get it? That's very sweet. Um, but yeah, the, the ability to sort of abuse this, it just isn't really there. Even I mean, I actually looked it up at the time. Uh, you know, uh, when when it was going crazy and everybody was talking about it, I was like, does Storm cast those copies? And it doesn't. No. Nope. So you can't kill them with a Storm spell, you know, Storm bounce spell or whatever. Uh, you just It's just a value card. You just yep. play stuff and shock things, and that's great. And it's really good and limited. Nowhere in Constructed. It's, it's mediocre and limited, I think. It's good and limited. I mean, I would actually take this over that rare. When you just said you'd just take the rare? Huh? When you just said it was like you just take the rare one in the back. The I know I forgot card. about that one. You forgot about the lightning All strike. Right, it's never, well, it's never 100 percent lightning strike versus ember swallower, and you were just like, like you Lash. are so insane. And I'm like, well, okay. It's a four five. It's a four five. I don't know. Either way, yes, I agree that you are correct. Ember swallower is the pick, but yeah. lightning strike. Because Searing Spear was just not flavorful enough. It wasn't. This is lightning. We're in, like, the God's time, man. Look at it. It's a hand shooting lightning from the sky. You think that's better than a spear that's on fire? I mean, it's six of one and a half dozen of the other. Mm hmm? Mm hmm? I didn't hear what you said. It's six of one and a half dozen of the other, where, you know, it's like the same difference. It's mm -hmm. all the same difference to me. It's just weird. I, I like just to poke fun at wizards that they can't, you know, just reprint the, the spells that that do the things. I mean, I also think, like, some I like the, the name Lightning Strike. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. That's all I got. I mean, this is just the premier I red mean, burn spell outside of Magma Jet. All right, Magma Jet versus Lightning Strike, go. Light oh, oh, we're on that one already. First, I want to just say that I can't wait to kill a 6-6 six -six with two Lightning Strikes, and when I played the second one, I go, it does strike twice. That's what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. Yeah. Why am I the only one that just loves bad jokes, <laughs> horrible jokes? Anyway, L Lightning Strike uh, is able to kill more things. Now, you get to scry with Magma Jet and Limited, but I want to have the better removal spell for the cost. Yeah, yeah here's Magma Jet. So, so you get the Magma scry. Jet. And the scry can sometimes be important, but in the early turns, I don't think it's that essential. Uh, along with, when I want a creature dead, I want it dead. And, that, and Magma Jet can't provide that all the can time. Can we strike the Magma Jet pose? The Magma Jet? Is it this? Is it this? Is it this? I don't. She's doing. She's doing the body. Thing. Wait, wait. You do the magma jet pose, and I'll do like the the fire. She's casting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the magma jet hasn't been reprinted and stayed on in a decade. There's a reason. <laughs> it's like I didn't bring back Scry since then. Shut up. <laughs> a yes, they did, and B they didn't reprint it when they did. Because preordained says what's up, but it hasn't been reprinted 
the one time they could bring it back, they didn't bring it back. They brought it back here. It's incredibly powerful. It's one of the best burn spells of all time. It gives red card selection, which back in Mirrodin, at least you know, back, in, huge, back yeah. in Fifth Dawn when it first came out, people were freaking out because red yeah. is like, red should have nothing to do with card draw, should have nothing to do with card selection, and this is just pure, wonderful burn and card selection all in one. Yeah. It's going to see a ton of constructed play because it's just so good with such high upsides, and it's fantastic and limited. You play it in every single red deck. Uh, you have it in sealed. In draft, you pick it highly. You probably pick Lightning Strike over it because it's just more damage and it can go to the face. I and like blah, it blah. more, yeah. I mean, it's, sadly, it's just, I mean, you know, the numbers matter and three matters more than two. Mm -hmm. But Magma Jet is still amazing. I don't even want to make that choice. I hope they're not in the same front run. See, I, I also just don't like that they printed both those cards in the set. I just feel like having two of the same burn spells at the same cost is just kind of weird. Well, not, they're not the same, though. I mean, you know. No, they're, they're slightly different, but they cost the same. It's like two removal spells at the same. It's kind of like if Doomblade and Ultimate Price were in the same set. It's possible. Yeah, yeah. it's just I, like It very just similar. feels a little strange, but ultimately, I'm glad Magma Jet's back. Sure. Super sweet art, too. Messenger Speed is terrible. Uh, I'm do just going to lay that out there. Do I have to listen to your boring speech again about how they make bad cards, so good cards can be good <laughs> cards? No, it's crap. Don't play it. Sweet. Minotaur Skull Cleaver. Yeah. Because they, Boon Seder exists in green. It's a four mana, or it's a three mana four two all the time that can be played in instant speed. And this guy is a two two that gets plus two plus. I feel like seven. the world always comes around because like that's a rare. This is not. Uh, and they did print, I don't remember how long ago, I think it was somewhere in Return to Ravnica. Yeah. Um, that they printed a two two, the same thing. It was just a, a pretty much the reprint. Except it was a Minotaur now instead of there was a human or something. But right. it was just a 2 2 when it comes into play, it gets plus 2 plus 0 in haste. And I thought it was a very cool design. I think it's perfect. I mean, it's just a, 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 two, a great ogre, you can say, but the turn it comes into play, it attacks for a lot. Right. And so I think it's a cool design. Um, and I like, I like the, the design. Uh, don't get yeah. me wrong. I think it's a cool design. It's just interesting that, you know, you get to see the things that people get, some things that I don't get. Obviously, there's a rarity mm -hmm. disparity in there as well. A rarity uh, disparity. A rarity disparity. I'm a <laughs> poet, not even aware of it. Um, the the Minotaur, though, himself, he's sweet. He's playable. Mm -hmm. You'll like him in your red decks. And he's able to attack up, as it were. Yes. Able to attack into things that he wouldn't normally kill if he were a 2-2. Two that -two, he's able to kill if he's a 4-2. And my last bit is that I like the art because when I made fun of it on the Magic Show, I, I called it Auk Hans Run Faster. Because, <laughs> you know, whatever. Anyway, anything else on this one? No, I got, I got nothing. Ordeal of Perforos is sick. Yeah, this is the one that, like, like once the uh, ordeal has been accomplished, a lot of people will be like, oh, that kind of sucks. But this one, they're just like, no. Oh, dude, like, my creature got three plus almost one counters, and I dealt three damage to something else. Like, wow. Yeah. And it's the best art. Art is sick. Yeah. Art is totally sick. He probably had the hardest challenge, though. Uh, like, one probably. of them was just trying to get away from the stalker giant. <laughs> one was it was just, like, walking away from the big face in the window, and you're yeah. like, okay, it's a real ordeal. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, but this one's, like, giant hellhound of pain trying to eat your face. Yep. So that's why you deserve a shot. Play it in limited in every which way you possibly can get it. Uh, constructed, not so much. Nope. nope. Peak eruption. Could see constructed play is a little bit weird and limited. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's like limited playable. I mean, it's, it, obviously, it's going to sit in your sideboard. Yeah, but you might bring it in when someone else is playing mountains because you know, YOLO, and you want to deal three extra damage because you can. I mean, it really hurts them with if they try to do like a three color deck, you know, yeah. and they try to push their mana too far, and you're like, it'd be three. sure. I mean, it does deal damage. Um, I mean, the one place that I think it's going to be good is, like, in Standard, because I think it's going to be hard to not play this for the Mono Red Mirrors. Mm. Like, I just think that you're going to want to have it. Um, True. Just, I mean, this especially is, against the big red decks. Right. This is the opposite of Cryoclasm. Cryoclasm was a red and two color spell in Cold Snap, and it destroyed an Islands or a Plains, and it dealt them three damage. And that Much card, better card. God, this card was ridiculous. Uh, helped define Standard, helped make Big Red a deck. I mean, it was... It was in, it was insane. So yep. it's no cryoclasm, but it is good, and it is for me like a really cool hoser. I, I really like this type of hoser, particularly for red. Yeah, no, I, I'm pretty excited to see what happens to it. But I, again, I'm glad that there's just like red on red hate. I don't really have to worry about it like killing any of the lands I'm gonna play. Eh, whatever. 
It's all good. Portent of betrayal because your act of treason needs to scry. You just add another <laughs> mana to it. Yep, pretty much. Plus one mana, plus one scry. Sure. Oh, sorry, man. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, um, if you have something crazy like a murder king, you can always sacrifice that guy. Uh, otherwise, at least so far, I can't even recall a way to sacrifice guys on demand. Um, I don't, in, like in black, was there a way to sacrifice guys? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a ton. There. Well, there was return to the under return from the underworld that type of thing. I mean, like sacrifice a creature colon. Oh, in limited. Sorry, in, yeah. in limited. Yes, yes. I mean, constructed. Yeah, I start in limited. Let's put it that way. I always start mm -hmm. in limited, and, and I always I start in constructed because I'm mono standard all the time. Exactly. So together, we're different strokes. Um, but yeah. Ultimately, in limited, it's a fine card, like all limited active betrayals mm -hmm. are, or active treasons are, rather, um, in that you take their best thing and you smash with it. And in a perfect world, you're able to like finish their ordeals. Or you're able to, or they're dead, or they're dead. Finishing their ordeal seems pretty absurd. I didn't think about that. That's uh, gross. Like, oh, I finished your ordeal for you. Wait, and wait, I drew wait. Two I, need cards. To, I need to go back. Sorry to go back. Wait, ordeals right here. Where's your deal? Did I miss it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, you don't sacrifice it, so whenever this creature, so they get to finish the ordeal, even if it's their own creature attacking oh, you. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm sorry to ruin your day. I had to go back and check it out. Well, I'd sorry. rather have went back and made sure I'm wrong than yeah. be wrong and thought I was right. Because they still control the enchantment and all that boring, yada, yada, yada stuff. Blah, 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 rules, whatever. It would have been way cooler. Yeah. The only thing I'd that. say about this is it's another act of treason, uh, but I actually just like the art because most of the act of treasons are just like red, fury, whatever, muscles, and yeah. this is like... Two like Murpho going at it, like attacking. Like I love that it's just like she's just turned around, she's got the trident, she's about to stab the Murpho, and I like the art of it, like in the water. It's not a bite it. It's not a bite it. It's a trident. It's a trident. And those deal more damage. Yeah, they do. Priest of Eros. Eros, as I understand it, is the red white god. Why? Because it's priest of Eros. It has a white activation for its special ability, yeah. and then it talks about Eros in the flavor text. Uh, so I'm looking forward to Eros in one of the other. I'm looking sets. forward to all of it. I don't know what the set's going to finish off like, but the one thing that I'm the one thing I'm very happy that Wizards does hmm. is they like definitely ta tell a story and like take sets in crazy directions lately. Hmm. And it's like it, it's exciting for new sets. Like I feel like I am too have been in this game for too long and I'm too jaded to get this excited every time a new set comes out. But they always <laughs> find some way to make me happy, and it and it makes sense because like. Think about wizard like design <coughs> team. They're in there like, how do you get thirty year olds excited about stuff? <laughs> like seriously, if it doesn't have a football, <laughs> how do you do it? If it's not sports ball, what do you do? Yeah, I mean that's you know it's so cool that they have this really interesting job of like how do we make people who play this game for literally twenty years. <laughs> Still be excited about it, and, and and they have been doing it like absolutely, like every single set they do something new, which I which I love, yeah. and it's crazy that they continue to do so. And you can literally find every single set for at least the past five years, even if not more, that does something new every single time, and not just a mechanic. You know, things like how like, the set comes spoil becomes spoiled, how we draft it, mm -hmm. like they've changed up everything all the time, and so. You know, no doubt about it, the, the Theros itself is super cool. I love the world. I love the new top-down design thinking, those mechanics that they're doing. Uh, they ask online, you know, well, what people want these days. And what I said was Theros and Innistrad are all about, like, top-down, take a world and just fill it full of things yep. you expect. Where I want a story. I want, a, I want the weatherlight done in the new sort of modern way to mm -hmm. design things where it's all about the stories. Like, for example, I want three planeswalkers. And then I want the same three planeswalkers in the next set. And then I want the same three planeswalkers in the third set. And I want them all to be different and change. They need you, to oh, all want. evolve. I want all of them to be Sarkin the Mad, you know? From Sarkin Vol yeah. to Sarkin the Mad. Like, that was an evolution of a character. Mm -hmm. And in this way, you have multiple big characters that you can show evolving among the sets. That's actually what I feel is the, is the next thing that they're going to try to I mean, Evan, Chandra has become a pyro master now. Argument invalidated. Hmm. All right. Hmm. Anyway, uh, this a, is this a one mana one one that's playable? No, because it doesn't exile, so it can't even kill a god, which is kind of frustrating. Well, I mean, it can't kill one of the five mythics in the set. Really, that's the. But it's a priest bar. of a different mythic. Yeah. It's not fair. It's a horse of a different color. It's a priest of it a different mythic. It is a priest of a god, 
and a that stupid don't even exist and, yet. And a Setago, a stupid little wolf could exile an enchantment. That's just not fair. Dude. A stupid little tiny wolf. Silver Fox Wolf was sick. Yeah. Would have How can fun. that take a god out? Hey, well, now this can't. Yeah. But it can destroy bestow creatures, it can destroy all those stupid ordeals, yep. it can destroy all those extra enchantments, they give them all these little, sweet little bonuses. Are you telling me this is unplayable and limited? Yep. Perforos, this God card of the is Forge. Not. This card is not. Uh, not uh, this card, or sorry, this card is playable. It's very me. much playable. Yeah. Uh, this is amazing. I think it's one of the best pieces of art. Like, the gods are all pretty good. Mm. Like, I think this is my second favorite art in the set uh, behind uh, Heliod. Mm -hmm. I really like Heliod's art. It was the Heliod's first piece of art we saw, and it was still really sweet. So good. Um, and I really like this card just in the fact that it lets your red-based aggressive decks, not only are you going to play Boris Harkin and that, so it's pretty easy to turn them on, right. and all your haste guys, like you get to play them, turn him on after they wrath or something, and then attack with them with a haste guy. Mm -hmm. I think this is a super powerful effect. Uh, but I like that it's reach. Like, you can get the extra points of damage in, even if the board's getting mucked up. Right. Um, Ultimately, it's just really good. Um, they made every creature a little Kelvin champion. They gave you a incremental ability or a sort of a, a tangential ability of giving them just a bonus, a fire breathing bonus, whatever. Um, and then, like, oh, by the way, now he's a 6 5 that can attack you. Yep. Just get you. Super sweet. I love it. I think it's great. And there's not much else to say. If you play it, if you see it in limited and you're red, you slam it. You see it in sealed, you high five your buddy. And. Go from there. And if you ever go hammer into this and it's active on turn four, you just have to think of that scene from Thor where like he's about to die and the hammer comes flying into his hand and he just wins the game because of it. It's all then I think he about. Smashes yeah. your opponent's That's all face I think about. In. When you cast Porphyros, I'm gonna like grab it, pick up the hammer, and just attack. Like I don't <laughs> even care. <laughs> don't care, you lose. Card is sick. Now his emissary is very very good um again another bestow cost that is very high but plus three plus three can't be blocked set by two creatures generally you're going to put that on something that has a, that is a two two or a three three all of a yep. sudden it becomes a six six or a five five that can't be blocked set by two guys i mean i'm not happy how this card broke the the mold though it costs seven mana to bestow instead of six yeah well it it's depends. pretty expensive yeah i think some of the others now that i think of the their black one was the same uh, I thought it was the most expensive, but it was not. No, the black one was the gave intimidate, yeah. and it was uh, and it was four mana for the two two, and it was seven mana to bestow. Yes, were so. you sure? I thought it was six. Was pretty it seven? Pretty sure it was seven because we okay. again I, I remarked at the time. Regardless, it's very good. You will play it in your red decks. It is very good. Yes, it's slow, but this entire format, as we've seen with the removal, that is very expensive and or yeah. just in red. Um, you know, is not a very fast format. I think you're going to be able to bestow this a lot more than you would expect. Yep. Otherwise. Uh, non constructed No. Just not. Don't do it. Um, Rage of Perforos. Again, five mana to deal four damage to a creature. Can't be regenerated. That's nice. Yeah, I mean, it is pretty sweet. Uh, the only downside I have for it is, uh, what was the, uh, the black removal spell? Uh, last Again, whip or yeah, something? Yeah, the whip of whatever. Uh, I just don't like that they both are the same cost for like the all close to the same effect. Like I like the removal to do a couple little different things. So you could argue this is very similar to the black one. Yeah, so like when you're in like the reason I say this is like when you're in black red and you get to pack three, like you've been taking some removal, but then your removal is identical to the other removal. So it's just like like you see both of them and sure, like deal four damage target creature is a little bit worse than negative four, negative four, but you do get the scry, so they're very similar. Right. And then you're just like, ah, uh, right. uh, one's instant, one's a sorcery. Uh. Yeah, I mean, you take the instant for that, but like, I just, I just, I didn't know it was actually a sorcery. I thought it was innocent until that moment. But I, I just don't enjoy like when cards are identical. It's kind of like when you had a it's turn a to slag and and the uh, death cross <coughs> or something. Whenever like they're both mm -hmm. in the same set, I don't think those were, but there was. A, there's two similar removal spells that were identical in black and red before. It does feel a little, not quite lazy, but a little like mirror mirror, a little a little matchy matchy. I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah. Because you're just like, oh, I got the black one, and oh, I got the red one. And if you're playing black red, oh, now you're fighting for sort of like the same spells. If they get to five mana, now you sort of have the same amount of removal you're able to use. It's very similar. Like this one doesn't deal more damage. That one doesn't, you know, take away more toughness. They're sort of like the same spell. Yeah. Like if I was at uh, wizards, I would probably fight for this to cost like four mana, honestly. Like, I think just being able to kill creatures, 
<laughs> when there's a lot of X fives. And you could have made it two red and two colors. <coughs> you know, you didn't have to make it a red and yeah. four. You could have made it two red and two. You could have done a variety of things to make this spell more interesting. You could have done have it dealt five damage. I'd have paid two red and three colors for that. Obviously, they work around the numbers. They change the mana cost all the time. They know this that way better than we do. They yet. really do, and they've played it in limited a lot more than we have, obviously. So, you know, I'm sure this is the most correct version, but that doesn't mean it doesn't look or feel weird. Yep. And that's where we're at. Play it in limited, though. It's amazing. Uh, the Minotaur Lord. The Minotaur Lord. Woo woo. I like how it has trample and gives all the other ones trample. I like how the 2 3 has trample for not a lot of reasons other yeah, than. It, it, sure. Yeah. Why doesn't it just say Minotaur creatures you control get plus one plus one? Why isn't it a 3 4? All right. So I know well, this is. a 3 4 in that case. I, I know this hasn't happened before, but I've been waiting patiently for a 3 4 that's either black or red. Um, for 3, excuse me. Just a 3 4 uh, with an upside. Because I've been looking at the power. Wait, 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 you're looking for a 3 4. For three with upside. Well, it doesn't have to have an upside without a downside. That's more what I'm saying. It could be a vanilla creature. A three mana vanilla creature for three. A three four vanilla creature for three. Yes, in red or black. We ha the power creep is happening. Not power creep. Sorry, I hate using the word power creep because the actually magic is not getting faster. You could have seen that when we played Jun vs Jun in the Clash of the Titans because old Jun destroyed you, Jund. There's no <laughs> power creep. That deck was absurd. Yeah, that deck was um, insane. But I just think that like with where the creatures have been going, like you have locks on smiters and you have fleece main lions, and you have these like mimicking red and black creatures that like can't break from limited to constructed because they're just like they have a downside and they're already a little bit smaller. Yeah, I mean, but part of it is that the green, you know, green should be the big fatty color, white should be the good weenie color, and red and black are kind of stuck in the middle. But I agree with that, but I, I think that they're not, like, showing their true form. Maybe it needs to be black. I just think a black, like, 3-4 for 3 would be pretty sweet. Maybe. I don't know. I just feel like I don't really want to push black and red to the same creature levels that white and green have in order to keep them different and in yeah. order to keep black. You know, like, Vampire Nighthawk is probably as much as I would ever want to push it. I think, you know, you go to a 3-mana three 3-4 three, that doesn't have flying, doesn't have, you know, yeah. lifelink, it doesn't have death touch, like... It's just a door. It's just a bad green creature at that point. Yeah, but it's in a color that can maybe stabilize with other things. Anyway, uh, that's all I'm gonna say about it. I just, I just can't. Anyway, our Rage Blood Shaman to be the Minotaur Lord. This is a card that you can draft around. This is a card you can draft early and be the Minotaur guy. This is a card you can get late because you're the only Minotaur guy. Mm -hmm. Like that's what I like about it. There's generally going to be maybe one Minotaur drafter at the table just because there's so much. Synergy I'd say in them. I'd say there's .5. Because there's only a couple cards that are synergistic in Minotaurs. Uh, maybe. I mean, you know, it depends, obviously. But, you know, you certainly can be that guy. Yes. And if you open this card, uh, I wouldn't be that surprised. I wouldn't, you know, feel bad if you don't see another one. But I wouldn't be surprised if you actually see another one in a draft, and then you're just like the nut deck. Right. You're just the nut Minotaur deck. So yeah. it's not something that you're excited to play in sealed because you have to have a lot of help with it. It's a, I'm excited to play it in draft because I can draft around it, and those yeah. are the cards that I like a lot. Um, and I don't, you know, it's just not something that has constructed Minotaur Tribal. Mm -mm. Yep. Don't do it. Yeah. Moving on. Satter Rambler. He was born a rambling Satter. Mm. What? what? Jumping what? over the fences. Doing the best He's he jumping he over the can. fence. He has fruit behind him, but he, all, like, fruit in his basket. But he also has trample? He's I, stealing that fruit. Jumping them fences. Being a 2-1 trample for two. I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand it. He's on. The, well, he's really good, obviously, with the ordeals and and pumps and, and cards that pump. So we just put it, take our satyr out. Of I'm test. just, you know what? I'm just put him go. on a quest. I'm now on the ordeal crutch. I'm sorry. It's like every time you mention something, you're like, but if you put an ordeal on it, like it's pretty good. So this is how Evan's normal days. He's just like, I must follow, finish this quest. And you just like put sti like like your wife puts sticky notes around the house, and you're like. Wash the dishes. Got that quest done. Then you find like a sticky note at the and bottom. I get XP, and you're dude. Just like, oh, what's the next one? <laughs> at the bottom of the dirty dish pile. Oh my god! You know, yeah. Uh, Satter Rambler as a two mana, two one, is fine. I, I like nothing. the fact that you can pump him. I like the fact that you can pump him. He's going to trample over. Like that's actually going to be relevant. You act like it's not relevant. It will absolutely be relevant. Either whether it's a green can, pump can, spell, can, can, can I swipe you? Or a thingy? white pump spell. Can I swipe you swipe? It's not that great, okay? Don't play it in sealed. Spark Joe. Spark Joe. I like this card. Which, this card, when I saw it, I can't remember what it's called, but there's a 1-1 for two colorless red 
that like when somebody doesn't tap all their lands, like they have to destroy one. It's like really yeah, old. It's before it's the old. mana, but it has like the same art, like just the same art. You say so. All I'm saying is I like Spark Jolt. I want to say it's almost constructed playable. <laughs> no. I'm just saying, Sorry, I, didn't, I, I didn't think it's closer than you think. <laughs> yeah, 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 whatever. <laughs> I mean, gut shots I'll play, but that's a long story. Um, <laughs> gut shot was free. Gut shot was free. And you played it in blue white decks. But it didn't give you scry. You didn't play it in red decks either. Right. I mean, the <laughs> fact that it's, it's hard to argue that you're going to play this over lightning strike. Or, or shock. Or shock, even. Mm. God, if you're going to play this. You're going to play Shock over this. This card is not. Scry yeah. 1 is not that good of an ability. <sighs> I mean, even in it's, the red it's decks. It's some value. You like value way too much, man. Like, you're like, maybe we'll just change, like, Shock or, or Lightning Strike to this. And it's like, you know you could just play Sphinx's <laughs> Revelation. <laughs> like, you could just do that. <laughs> Fine. I like this card. I want, I want this you card to You and your better. trading post. But this is soup play. <laughs> right. You and your trading post. Well, me and my Spark Jolts, Okay. It's good and limited. It's going to be sweet. This is this is like one of those spells that's really weird and that you could actually just spark jolt your own guy yep. just to get the sweet heroic bonus. I think that's the only real place I want to play this card. I don't think there's like it's a cyborg removal spell when they have a lot of X ones. It like like the way that I look at this card is add scry one to Hornet Sting. Like it didn't see a lot of play. And I don't think that means it's going to see a lot more play. You don't play yeah. cards just because they scry. That's just a little bit of tagged on bonus. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate that it's just not enough to make it yeah. like amazing. And I mean, if you finish off a creature in limited with this and you get to scry off of it, that's fine. But you still kind of two for one yourself. Yeah. So you got to keep that in mind. But 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 Evan, I would have drawn a land and I got to put the bomb and then I drew a real spell, so I did it. <laughs> Hashtag upside. Spear point Oreed. This is. Is that Oreed or Oreed? I'm going to go with Oreed. Oreed. But o I don't really know how to read, Duke. so it's kind of ironic. Oreed. <laughs> He's dreamy <laughs> and really good at magic. And Yeah, I'm, it kind of sucks that like a year and a half ago, I like totally thought I was like a little, had an edge on him when we played with each other. And then I played him in Miami and he just dismantled me. It was like the most like deflating moment of my life. My favorite my favorite part of that tournament was when he was playing John and he was playing Bonfire of the Damned and he would have his hand and he would think, you know, and he would untap and he would think and he would look at his card and he would put it down. Yeah, and and he would just do and he would think and he would think about it and he would tap and he would no and he would look and he would like do something and then he'd reveal Bonfire of the Damned. Did he actually <laughs> reveal Bonfire like that once? It was amazing. He actually he destroyed that. that boy's soul. Oh wow! Oh my God. See, like when it I was because the commentators are like, "There's no way there's bonfire of the damned under there." He's over there thinking about this, thinking about that. And it's like because it's Reed Duke, he's like planning out all of his yeah. extra turns and how to totally smash this guy completely. And he just casually just like shows the bonfire of the damned and taps all out. And says, it was amazing. It was unreal. Wow. Reduce the master. The the only thing I can say about that is I when I I played him twice in that tournament and mm -hmm. he used to he did that. He like would draw a card and set it down on the table and think. Right. And at one point he did that and then he attacked me. I'm like, no. I get to know what phase we're in. <laughs> <laughs> That's unreal. Like you can't just start attacking me like, no, I we're still in draw step. Yeah, like, we're still in are you revealing a and miracle? And then he's gonna think and then he's gonna think like, oh, why does he why is that relevant right now? I'm like, no. You tell me when we move phases. That's nice. your job. <laughs> your turn, your phases, yeah. you let me know. <laughs> now the spear miss miss spear point here, uh the nymph it's themselves, uh is fine. Again, these are these are cards that you're gonna pick highly, you're gonna play them all the time. They're mm -hmm. gonna be really good in your in your limited decks. They're gonna go nowhere near constructed. Uh, you know, we, we've seen them here before. This is this is one that is is lower cost than the others. This is a a six mana bestow versus the seven mana versions that we saw earlier. Yeah, because a first strike it, plus two plus two on first strike isn't as powerful as the other effects. Right, it's good, but it's not like they're unblockable with intimidate yeah. or whatever, or they can fly. So, it's good. It's fine. Stone Shock Giant. I actually dislike this one because of the incredible disparity between the mana cost and the monstrosity cost. Five and eight. Yeah. Five and eight is just not six and eight. It's not five and seven. And but you understand why? In that once you activate his monstrosity cost, you kind of win the game, uh, more or less by default. At that point, they have to have a lot of flyers mm -hmm. in order to stop all of your monsters to come in and smash. 
And that's sort of, you know, the idea of the card. I get it. But, you know, it's a little unfortunate that it costs so much in disparity versus just cost. I mean, I think it's fine because think of how push this is. It's a 5-4 for 5, which is a pretty big mo monster. Which is pretty pretty significant. For no not a about. rare, you know. And, um, like, I mean, I was just saying that Ember... Ember uh, Ember Swallower. Ember Swallower is a 4-5 for 4, and that's insane. But just for one more mana, it you just flip it. And yeah, that's, like, it. pretty good for Uncommon. For Uncommon, that's actually really good. Yeah, and so, like, having that ability and having 8, like, unblockable if that's how, you know, you're not going to activate it if you're not going to win. Right. Uh, or you might, but, yeah, I think this card's very good. Yeah, I mean, this card is great in that you're, if you play in the green-red deck, you're able to ramp your mana, you're able mm -hmm. to get more mana out there. You're able to have huge ground pounders that when you activate his monstrosity, you're able to just smash in with an, you know, an 8-7, for God's sake, and none of their ground guys can block. I mean, again, I feel like it's just 8 mana win the game. This is going to be, like, the. I think this card is going to get whipped the most. The uh, negative mm -hmm. 4, negative 4, like... He's going to get the whip. Yep. He's going to get out of here. Storm Breath Dragon. What, what? Very good and limited. <laughs> <laughs> Incredibly good. In fact, five mana Mythic Dragons are pretty solid and limited. Yeah. It, I mean, it's not as good as Thunder My Hellkite, but that's fine because Thunder My Hellkite was a little bit too good. Thunder My Hellkite was way pushed. I mean, yeah. Like, it, it infuriated me at Pro Tours when... Every single Pro Tour, I mean, I love, I love Zach Kelly. He's like one of my favorite people in the world. But every single Pro Tour, he'd be like, yeah, I kind of like designed that card, and it was like one of my favorite cards, and I built it, and I was really happy. And I was like, no, it's terrible, and it kills me every tournament. And it's like, it's turn three, and you're like, I'm going to play my best. Actually, it's turn one. It's like, I'm oh, just going to assume, one. I'm going to assume that my opponent is going to turn four Thunder Mahalkite me. What can I do? And then turn four comes, I'm dead. I am dead. And it's just like, I planned my entire game plan around mm -hmm. not dying to this card, and I still just die to and this card. And you died to that card. And no one played it for months. Why weren't it? Because we were talking about that. Was the, one back. Yeah, well, I mean, again, Snapcaster had to leave, and so did Delver, yeah. Delver's Dominance. But, yeah, this is the slightly toned down Thunder Maw. And so now you get like this opposite thing. Like, Thunder Maw came out, and everyone was just like, it's good, but okay, whatever. Yeah. You know, and now. Thunder Maw is leaving, this guy's coming, and now they're just like, well, where's Thunder Maw? Like, now what got, happened? Yeah, now we got to play Storm Breath Dragon. Yeah, so this good. crap, like, we don't get a 5-5, five, five, we get a 4-4, four, four. that's not cool. Like, no, yeah. it's fine. In fact, Thunder Maw was just insanely pushed, and this card is actually kind of fair. And now we get to argue on whether or not the monstrosity means anything. All right, so I do not think the monstrosity means anything because it is already going to kill blue and white decks. Like, um... I think how fast it is and how fast you want your red decks to be. Mm -hmm. I think it's monstrosity is seven mana, and if you're playing an aggressive deck and you have access to seven mana, it's not that go going that good for you. But that's not true. What happens, the reason that this thing has the ability it has is that the, the red deck cannot win versus blue-white when they flood out. Yeah. This gives you flood out protection. If you flood out, you know, on turn five, you play your yeah. storm breath and you go blah or whatever, and they're like, oh my god, I've gotta, you know, I don't have a supreme verdict, so I've gotta hurry up and sphinx this rev. And you're like, oh, mountain go, oh, mountain go. Well, once you just, once you play seven mana, you can legitimately kill them by just dealing them like three damage from the cards in their the hand, and then three monstrosity. From Actually, the seven. I keep forgetting that the creature gets bigger. So yeah, you're right. Like that, that is pretty good, especially when you can Azuri's Charm or Detention Spirit. Right. So it has to be some Supreme Verdict. Exactly. Like they have to be. Able to All right, right you win this round, sir. Yeah. You win this round. Feels good, man. Uh, play that all the time in limited and first picket and play in your sealed and be happy about it. What is this card? Like, I, at all. Like, I've never understood the flavor of it. No, I've never, uh, yeah, I just, I want to know <laughs> why, what, what is happening? I want to know when I meet this thing, what it does to me and why I get firepower and why each human you control has that. It's like a really weird flame fusillade type card. Uh, flame fusillade, gave all your creatures tap, deal one damage to our creature player. Yeah. Uh, for a red and three colors until end of turn, it was a spell, and here's a six mana five six, and humans can throw Don't fire. Don't get me wrong, it's kind of cool, and I think this ability will be good and limited, and you can build around it, and I like that. I like rares that you can build around. It itself has no ability, so you have to work hard to make it good. Well, you don't have to work super hard, but you got to work. It is a five six for six, but sure. I mean, it's a five six for six, which is fine. But I just don't get why it has that ability. Like, <laughs> like I just it, it why makes, it gives it. Who gets it? Why they get it? And Wait, what we're, happens? Uh, what was what was that? We're get, we're getting we're getting a note. We're getting uh, a note. Oh, oh, from yeah. Oh, the myth of Prometheus. Oh, who give fire to the humans? Hmm. Oh. oh, oh, it makes so much oh. sense now. 
Can you hear I the sound have of the really Greco-Roman knowledge being dropped? I really wish I was more educated. Yeah. Magic cards! Woo! <laughs> uh, wait, moment back one second. For those who want limited help, it's very good and limited. <laughs> I'm glad you got that. That's what they... they the more they you for, know. They come, burr, burr, burr. <laughs> they come for the last stay for the really good, on top, limited help. Yeah, man. I'm here for you guys. I'm giving you the knowledge that we don't have like Prometheus. Um, <laughs> Titan Strength uh, is a really cool fixed brute force. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, they can't give you giant growth. Giant no, growth they gave to red. Insane. Yeah, they gave giant growth to red, as in brute force, in planar chaos, because they were mixing, messing around with the, with the color pie. It just saw con, like constructed play. It got a ton of constructed play. Like, oh, we're sorry, but this actually gives you a lot of it. It gives you the plus three damage. You know, the plus three power. Yep. It gives you a toughness boost, which I was impressed with. Mm -hmm. I was expecting this to be plus three plus zero. Yep. And it also gives you scry. Like, it's actually just upside, upside, upside. Yeah, no, I mean, it's great. I mean, I, it's not going to see uh, standard play, mostly because of the Robovelt uh, Maka. Yeah. Uh, that's card still, that is kind of a giant growth, but it's still very good. Um, uh, but this is a good limited uh, effect for a red deck, just because you will be able to get that extra damage through. But I would look at this more as a you get you your dead or get him really close to lethal, because like that plus one on defense t will tend to not be more than just plus one to toughness. Yeah, it will, it will generally not save the creature. That's what I well, would say. Like, in a combat situation, the plus one toughness is generally not going to save, but it will give you enough power to kill whatever it is yeah, you want. Yeah, the, the only, yeah, that, more so what I'm saying is it's, if, if this card was pick one, target creature plus three plus zero, or plus zero plus one, mm -hmm. uh, it would be the same card. Like, almost exactly. If it were plus three plus zero? Or plus zero plus one. It would be like the same card in the sense that usually if, you're, sure. if the, def the toughness is helping, it, the creature probably already has enough power to kill the thing. Like, only when you're, like, maybe sometimes when you're dealing with, like, a hundred-handed one or something. Well, I'm also thinking of, like, you know, multiple blocks when, you yeah. know, when it's, when it's blocked by two creatures or more or whatever. Um, but, but ultimately, as a really sweet red combat trick, it's terrific and limited. They're just going nowhere and constructed, but that's okay. Yep. And I like it. Two-headed Cerberus. Well, we went from the mythic one in our last video. Yeah. To this one, not so mythic. Which is uh, just a double strike. Double it, strike's cool. Super flavorful. I like it. Both heads get their get their chance. Yeah. Hum, hum. yeah strike, it, strike. It, it actually probably is the most flavorful double strike of all time, yeah. It really is. Because yeah. every every other double striker is just like they have double strike because they're badasses or whatever. Yeah, but this one is like actually has two attacks. Actually has two heads and he's a chompy twice and it's just a one-two because it's a doggy. Yeah. yeah. I like it. It's smart. It's not that good though. No, it's terrible. It's a bad card in limited. It's I mean, you know, when you play three mana for a one two, I mean, even with a double strike. A two, two. I mean, yes, let's back up. Titan strength plus two headed Cerberus is a thing, and that's cool. Don't get me wrong, it's cool. But without the Titan strength half of that, wait. So what happens when your two headed Cerberus goes through the ordeal of when the uh, big you know Cerberus is attacking you? And then that one wins. Is that like dog fighting? Is that legal? Wait, is that the Michael Vick combo? Yeah, I think it is. Mm, weird. All right, Wild Celebrants. Uh, five mana for a 5-3. Destroys an artifact when it nears the battlefield. Because we have so many of those in this format. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, they got to do something and make a Manic Vandal really big. 5-3. Five. I understand that, like... It almost has no text on it, In almost. the mythology, there was a ton of statues, right? But there aren't a lot in the actual... There set. aren't a lot of statues. I would actually... Yeah. I can actually imagine this is a card that gets much better with the entire block. That's true. Because once the entire block is out, and this is the last set you draft, getting something that will destroy some really powerful artifacts yep. we may see later in the block could matter. Um, it does destroy the weapons, which is a thing. Sure. It does randomly destroy a few of the other artifacts that we'll get to that, you know, like, for example, those boots that give them mm -hmm. haste of flying. The artifact that uh, they can walk through walls, the equipment that mm -hmm. they can only, only be blocked by walls. So it's not like this is 100% dead. It's just largely irrelevant because everything is so enchantment based. Yeah. It's hard to get excited about an artifact killer. Yep. You got it all. Kind of a role player. Not really excited to play about a 22nd, 23rd card. Sort of sits at the top Sometimes of your Sometimes the five power is the only redeeming thing about this card. Will be better in seal than in draft. Yeah. Echoing <gasps> Hoplite. It's a human pile driver. Woo! The human pile driver. Uh, 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 uh. 
And it doesn't care about goblins attacking. It cares about any guy attacking. It doesn't matter. I think this is cool. I think you can actually get really scary really fast. You can turn into a 4-2 or a 5-2 really, really quickly. Yeah, the only thing I wish about this card was if it came out uh, when we also had Bloody Lands. Because it's just like the mana. Like, I want to play three colors with this kind of card. And yeah, I want to be the mana's aggressive. not going to work with you yeah, on it. And like, there's a reason. They wanted this to not work. Yeah, I mean, they just wanted the aggressive decks to not be, like, multicolored. And they get they win. Like, this card is probably not going to see a lot of play nope. until we get better mana. It's just not possible. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to need better mana. And But honestly, I just it's just not a great card in Constructed, I feel. Yeah. And, and even with perfect mana. It is mana. a 2-2 two, two for 2. Think about <clears> it when it attacks on its own. It is a 2-2 Yeah, two it's two. going to attack by itself, and it's going to make itself a 2-2. Two, two, no doubt about it. It's just it needs a lot of help. And it, as we saw with the battalion creatures, they need to have a sick battalion ability. Yeah. Or they need to be really good by themselves. And this is not really good by itself, but it has a really good ability. And that's just not enough. Yep. Anax and Siamese, hey yo. This is like one of the only heroic cards that like I will be happy to play with, even if I have no way to target them. Mm -hmm. Like first strike and vigilance for a three two for three is pretty good. But then it's everyone, on, yeah, everyone on your team getting plus one plus one and trample is like very alpha strikey to me. So it's like that last turn, you're just like thing 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 Ooh. attack. Yeah, I mean, and it pumps itself. It's pumping the whole team. Everybody gets trample, everybody gets a boost. You have infinite ways of targeting this guy, tons of ways of putting enchantments on this guy. Yep. Really sick. My only problem is flavorful and flavor police time. All right, uh, and, that, and that it's a human soldier, and there's two people, and there's two people in the title. It's just a weird thing. Like, And, you know, we've dealt with this before, um, and we've had this other times in Magic where, you know, They've dealt with it in different ways. Brothers Yamazaki got their own cards. Yeah. They were both the same cards, but they got different cards. Um, sometimes they just sort of stack them on there. Uh, they did it in Ravnica Block with mm -hmm. the uh, the Azette guys, whose name I can't remember right this second. But regardless, that's sort of just a flavor thing because otherwise, you know, from a from a card standpoint, it is really powerful and really good. If you open it in your sealed pools, you definitely want to see if red white is possible. You yep. want to see if you can splash white or splash red to make this happen because it is worth the extra effort. Anything that you target it with after you put it on the board is going to be extremely good. Yeah, it's going to be like extreme. It's it's a, it's an alpha strike card though. Sorta. I mean, can I can I go back to my ordeals for a second? No. Oh. we're done with our ordeals. Oh, you, I want to, there was a crutch over there. The ordeal ticker up in the left there. corner. Oh. Is that right? Yeah, it's right corner. Uh, has already maxed out. <laughs> We've maxed out on our deals. Dang it. <laughs> Destructive Revelry. Oh, wait. We have not. <laughs> ah, yeah, because it's going to kill our deals. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Destructive Revelry, really cool. Like, actually could hit Legacy Play. I think Rug Delver likes this card a lot. It destroys Umazawa Shites. It destroys Counterbalances if you can. Um, you know, it's... Uh, it ultimately, it's a it's a really cool card that it can kill a choke, for example. Um, you know, it's it, it, it deals incremental. <laughs> I like how we just go to choke. I'm going. I'm going to choke. It's like kill with the you know the 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 other two colors of the deck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, well, they're all islands. Uh, as I saw Rugged Over, you know, yeah. succumb to choke the other day, on coverage. Regardless, um, it is it is a really cool you know twist on naturalize. Yeah. It adds the red element. It has the green element. It's a really cool pairing. I think the artwork's really cool. Ultimately, you want to be in both of those colors. It's not something you splashed for in limited, but it is worth playing absolutely if you are in green and red. Yeah, I agree. So, I miss anything? Um, no. Nope. All right, sweet. All right, this is you. Go pose. Uh, okay, so it is a four 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 four, which is pretty sweet. Uh, I, I'm on the spot here. Usually you take over first. Oh. Um, but mm. anyway, I just want to see. I just want to sort of push them out. Sure. See if they can fly. Well, I don't think this card is actually that good. It uh, it's just another monstrous card. Really? You don't Do think you think it is? Good? I mean, it's a four 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 four. It has sure. protection from enchantment. So like the tension sphere is like one of the only cards. I mean, okay, limited. It's insane. We'll start. We'll go with you and say limited. You know, I'm thinking limited first. Limited. This card is a bomb. Boogity bomb. It is a four 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 four. It has protection from enchantments. That's actually a lot of creatures. That's protection from a ton of creatures. Mm -hmm. And once you go monstrous, now it is a seven seven pro. 
enchantment trampler that can also just start popping off creatures left and right. Right, it can literally start destroying enchantment creatures when it hits your opponent. It can trample immediately. It's going to go over anything they have. It's going to begin to provide you instant value with the first attack. If they try to double up on it and you have a combat trick, they're going to be really sad about it. And just cannot be blocked by enchantment creatures anyway. Can't be affected by the gods. I mean, just like, it's really super sweet. I like it. Yeah, I know. It's awesome. Um, it's even like a very, like, cheap monstrous ability, especially uh, monstrosity ability, with what its ability actually does. Right. And, uh, but let's talk about construct real quick. Okay, go for it. Uh, it's not going to do anything. I think it's like fighting a, a ground that, like, you can't win. We've got planeswalkers, uh, multiple different planeswalkers in green and red. We have Ember Swallower. We have a ton of four drops. There's just so many to talk about. Um, and it just doesn't have to fight get, them. Enchantments have to get so good. You know, yeah, for really this card good. to be for this card to be playable. I if mean, it said remove an enchantment from play, I mean it wouldn't be flavorful. Exile or exile, yeah. Sorry, if it exiled uh, enchantments, it wouldn't be that flavorful since it's you know a Polish crush or Polish. It's, a, it's not a Polish exiler. It's yeah, a Polish crusher. But it could deal with gods. Foot smashing. If you. it could deal with gods, I think there it could potentially if gods are a thing, but mm -hmm. but it can't. Oh, it can't. It does deal with underworld connections, which is sweet though. That's cute and adorable. And detention spheres. Xenagos the Reveler, baby. I don't think there's anything to say about this card. So we can All right, we just keep yeah. going. Okay. Uh, so this was... Cardis yeah, this was Brian Kibler's preview card, and I really like don't think anyone else on this world would have done it as much justice as Kibler. Mm -hmm. uh, like, anyone else more than this card would have just been, you know, bad. Would have just been incorrect. Yeah, but it's great. And the first thing I want to say about this card that is just bonkers is free mana. And every single time that I've ever dealt with free mana... And I was like, yeah, I don't know, Burning Tree is fine. No, it's insane. It's yeah, we, it's free mana. We undersold Burning Tree big time. Oh, huge. We missed it in a crazy way. I played it a week later in an, in an open, and I top 16, and, you know, BBD took my list to second place. Yep. You know, the deck was insane, and it was in a bunch of different versions, or a bunch of different archetypes. It, ma it made archetypes exist. Um, and the thing that I love about Xanthos the Reveler is that Xenagos. Xenagos. I always say wrong names. I'm bad with these names. It's right there. I know. I can't read. <laughs> Haven't you realized this? Um, Xenagos the Reveler is so awesome that right when it comes into play, it either is free and casts other spells, mm -hmm. or you start making 2-2. Two -two. So, like, it's one of the most aggressive <laughs> Planeswalkers I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. um, its ultimate is pretty cool. I don't think it's, like, that big of a deal. Its ultimate is neat, but ultimately not yeah. while you're playing it. While you're playing it, and this goes for almost every Planeswalker, is the first two abilities have to be either really synergistic or they have to be really powerful or both. And ideally they're both. Um, and when they're both and they're at their best, you have something like Elspeth Nine Errant. And when they're really bad, you have something like Chandra Ablaze, which is yeah. just terrible. But it, it doesn't matter. What Xenagos does is hit the board, either provide you a bunch of mana so you can play something else, or begin to defend himself and or attack the other player. So it's great on an open board when you're in top deck mode. Mm -hmm. It's great in the early game when you're ramping up to it with Elvish Mystics and stuff like that. Excuse me, it's really sweet. I think uh, I just I think the card is very powerful. Yeah, the the curve that I really liked uh, that blew me away when uh, Todd brought it up to me was turn two uh, Sylvan Kernitid, uh turn three Xenagos into turn four Rectus or turn four five. Just yeah. because on 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 turn four you're able to add two mana for each creature that you already have in play because you just made a two two the turn before. Right. The, plus the one mana from the uh, the wall. And then the four mana that you have in play, and you just actually turn for five on turn four. I'm just like, yeah, that's really gross. That's kind of gross. I mean, you know, Jund is Jund is as Jund does, and and it's still around. It still has a lot of like maybe the actual cards are gone, <laughs> but you know, it's still an archetype, and they I mean, still have a lot of tools. Green, red, black, good stuff. However you want to call it, whatever you want to call it, like this guy's gonna be in there. Domri Rod plus Cinegos is a good curve. Is fine. Will Ac win games. Actually, I think the uh, the curve is you got it opposite. I think it's Cinegos into Domri Rod. Right? Uh, yeah. That's you just, you like, play both Planeswalkers on a turn, and you're like, and have fun. Oh, <laughs> I have oh. two Planeswalkers that have four loyalty right now. Xenagos plus one Domri, like... I mean, you could do that pretty easily if you just Gross. go, like, guy into Burning Tree into guy into Xenagos. Right. I think, it's, I think it's a real thing. That's amazing. So, one of the chase rares from the set, for a reason, reminds me a lot of Garrick Wildspeaker, and mm -hmm. I sort of explained in the show. The first abilities both make mana, the second abilities both make guys, and the third abilities are cool, but ultimately doesn't isn't really necessary yeah. for it to be really powerful, and Xenagos is definitely powerful. Yep. Burnished Heart. 
I like the the design of this card a lot. I like it too. It's and a really cool card. I'm not gonna lie. If I didn't say I tried to put it in a trading post list right away, you get all the mana, all of it. Every piece of the mana is in play. Oh my God. You could get lands. every land out of your deck, every single land. Yes, all the lands, all, all the, the lands. time. And you can elixir and only be spells. And this card is poop and constructed. But yeah. I don't care because I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking about limited. I like limited. I like burnished heart and limited. I love what it does. I like the fact that it hasn't been used as a sorcery. I like the fact you can sack it any time. You can chump block something and then sacrifice it. You can use it. You can play it on turn three. You can use it on turn four, and then on turn five, you'll have what at that point? Up to eight mana, eight nine yeah, mana no, for I mean, your monstrosity is... stuff. Like, it's possible. I, I like cards like this too because it's a very good enchantment, or sorry, excuse me, artifact that can that can see play. So I will like oftentimes first pick it in drafts just because I don't want I don't get a color commitment. Yeah, you don't have to commit to anything. Yeah, you don't have to commit to anything. You get this awesome card. You already have a card ready for the long game. It's pretty, cool. Yeah, I'm pretty happy about it. I like it. It ramps you. It looks good. It's sweet. Flamecast Wheel. I love it. I loved Moonglove Extract. Moonglove Extract was a three mana artifact that you sacrifice it to deal two damage to our creature player. Yeah, this is just a lot worse. This is a lot worse. However, it is artifact direct damage yep. to creatures. But <laughs> it is artifact damage, and I like that. It's, it really doesn't matter what the numbers are that much. Like in terms of the one and the five, it could be two and the four. I mean, it doesn't. I mean, really it, matter. it's just going to see play because blue white doesn't get or blue white green doesn't get the same things black red does. More or less, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, and, and any deck is it, particularly in sealed. You're going to want this almost every time. Mm -hmm. And draft, it's a different animal because you have to sort of work with your curve yeah. a little bit. But again, if on turn one you don't have any one drops because they're all crappy, mm -hmm. and you play this instead, that's great because I mean, that's then your opponent has to look at that wheel over there and go like. Well, I'm going to play this bomb, this Polis Crusher, yep. for example, and I can't play this Polis Crusher until they get rid of that stupid wheel because they're going to destroy my nice rare guy who's going to monstrosity into ridiculousness. Like, that's what I like this card for. The same reason I like Moonglove Extract is the same reason I like this card. It's not so much about the investment, it's about what it does to the game. Yep. And it just changes it entirely. I like it. Cool? Yeah. All right. Pixis of Pandemonium, our last card for today, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa, why couldn't what? we have ended on a high note? No. <laughs> I mean, okay, so Pandora's Box is like one of the coolest stories to come out of all of this. And they didn't want to call it Pandora's Box. Well, I understand why. They didn't, you know, they call it Pixis of Pandemonium, so whatever a Pixis is, I guess it's a really cute word. It's just like, I, I'm, not, I'm not blown away by its ability because it's so slow. I think it would have been much cooler if it was like Exile the Top 2 cards. Something. I mean, I don't think it breaks the card if it just exiles two at a time. Not necessarily, like but slow. I think they would have to add a mana cost to it in that case because it's sort of a pseudo millstone or whatever. And it's really cute. It's really cool. You're going to have a bunch of fun at the kitchen table with this. Don't go anywhere near it on tournament tables. I'm talking release, release events, pre-release events. Drafts. Drafts. Don't. Just don't. It's not. No. Yeah. Just don't. If you're allowed... To eat right beside where you play, you can play this card. That's a good way to look at there it. There you go. Can you have a, you know, a big yeah. plate of deliciousness over here while you're yeah. fixing a pandemonium? Yeah. Yeah. I bet it's a ton of fun. Actually, I bet it's a total ton of fun in Commander where oh, every single player gets to exile See, I think, things. I think this is a huge Commander card because like, every, like no one really... I, I know a lot of people that don't even care if they win or lose in, in Commander, yeah. but like the idea of everyone just being like, so what are you in your 10 cards? Right, right. So you just exile the thing, and then all of a sudden, everyone turns them up, and you're yeah. like, what's happening? Yeah. Oh, my God, all this crazy stuff And is it happening. actually takes 50 minutes to, like, figure out triggers. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta love it. Now, those formats, super cool. The formats we mainly talk about, limited and constructed, not so much, but that's fine. That's not what it's there for. Those are all of our red cards, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us. So far. So far, we have one more day left. Oh, man. One more day. We can talk about all the green cards. All the green cards. A couple more multicolored cards. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites of the set. Yes. And the last remaining artifacts. Yep. That's what we're going to do. We will see you guys here tomorrow. I'm Evan Irwin. I'm Brad Nelson, and I'm tapping the cards. So you don't have to.